Welcome to study session 9, Remedial and Continuing Education. Introduction. In this study session, it is important that we identify and discuss the uses of remedial and continuing education. We will as well describe the various remedial and continuing efforts made learning and the learning facilities. Finally, we will significantly examine from 1903 to 1913 and some more years the performance of qualified African students who represented their countries in the international examination. Learning outcomes. When you have studied this session, you shall be able to identify the uses of remedial and continuing education, describe the various remedial and continuing education efforts and efforts made towards learning facilities. What is remedial education? We will start with the etymology of remedial and subsequently progress to the meaning of education, which sincerely speaking must not be a new word to us. Remedial is derived from the Latin word remedialis, 1651, meaning healing, curing, relieving. When applied in relation to a student, the term implies the need to remedy or correct specific skill deficits. Casaza and Silverman, 1996. A remedy is described as a solution to an ailment, a problem or a difficult. Remedial education can, therefore, be defined as a process which seeks to provide a cure to an ailing or sick learning situation or an environment. For example, if a child is unable to be proficient in a subject, the parents will always engage the services of an additional teacher to show the child how to learn that subject. There are times when the parents withdraw a student from a school to another one, perhaps one that is nearer home or one where the friends are fewer. The remedy is found in proximity home to the reduction of contact with peers. Remedial suggests students have not yet acquired the necessary skills for success at the post-secondary levels, and as such, their skill deficiencies demand a need for treatment. Chloe's 1980. That is repeated until such a time the treatment works. Very often, therefore, remedial classes are held for those who had been to the former school system but who had withdrawn for a variety of reasons. Remedial education is therefore an alternative or additional learning process provided for those who have not benefited fully from an inadequate formal education work and programs. Remedial education is an important component in lifelong education which provides for continuing learning. For example, if a teacher seeks to become a lawyer, his early education is remedied by the provision of fresh courses designed to prepare him for a career in law. In a similar way, a student who had failed, say English, at the school certificate examination is given special courses of instruction to assist him pass the examination. Uses of remedial education. Having discussed the meaning of remedy, education and remedial education simultaneously, it is essential to note that remedial education can also be defined as an answer to a situation where educational provision is not available to all. In such cases, workers who are unable to attend schools because they were not selected are offered an opportunity to study in the evenings. Remedial education is also a second chance to learners and thus helps a frustrated learner to continue to learn. In a way, remedial education provides a solution to a prevailing injustice in the distribution of educational opportunities. The colonial period is perhaps a good approach at identifying a society where higher education facilities were denied to the colonial peoples. Under that situation, 
many Africans began to study at home with the aid of teachers and subsequently attempted the examinations of the University of London. There have been some situations in which adult learners are unable to leave their jobs for full-time courses. Evening classes have proved avenues of achieving their educational objectives. Thus learners, who are also consequently highly motivated, invest their time, energy and resources to their work as private students. Faced with the problem of inadequate financial resources, competition for time from their family, they remain resolved to succeed and to self-reliant. They end with a search for knowledge and educational opportunities for self-improvement and economic mobility. Learning facilities. A number of Africans decided to rise to face the challenge posed by the existing in egalitarianism educational opportunities, with fourth bay walls shut against them and the possibility of travel to Britain or America a dream. African students began to fend for themselves. Some asked the Department of Education officials in Lagos for assistance. The establishment of King's College, Lagos in 1909, attracted more staff to the Education Department of Southern Nigeria. Again, some Nigerian workers, mostly clerks in various departments, asked these officials to help in the preparation for various London University examinations. Some teachers joined in making requests subsequent years. On 1st March 1919, 13 workers in Lagos forwarded a letter to the Director of Education and asked, May it please you to arrange for the inauguration of a continuation class at the King's College. The petitioners added, Our several vocations in life do not permit us to join the regular courses of the college, and we hope as external students to be able, if the constitution is made, to compensate a long-felt want and the institution of such a class will, we feel convinced, meet the approbation of the community. No action was taken on this request until H. Haman, the new principal of King's College, Lagos, approached the director of education on the subject in August 1923. After some consideration by the director, the Secretary of Southern Provinces and the Chief Secretary to Government, a grant of £200 was provided in the estimates to run the continuation classes. To meet the running cost, students were charged token fees paid in advance. Courses were offered in 1924 in Latin, Greek, Magnetism and Electricity, Electrical Science, the properties of matter, chemistry, history, and geography. At the end of the year, the director of education wrote to Haman, I am glad to see that you have made a good start. In 1925, new courses in geometry, algebra, trigonometry, and elementary science were added. Every effort was made to recruit Europeans to teach in the continuation classes for as Buchanan Smith, Acting Secretary, Southern Provinces, informed his boss, the Acting Director of Education, considers the ability of a European to teach is greater than that of an African. The Department of Course settled for an African whenever no European was available for a course. Dr. Aitken, Dr. Oluwale, and Dr. Mofford, a West Indian schoolmaster on the King's College staff, described by the Director of Education as main, far superior to the ordinary African lecturer, were invited to take some of the classes. The continuation classes were acknowledged by the colonial administration in Nigeria with pride. Thus, in government publications, annual reports and handbooks, information was carefully given that evening continuation classes and special classes for teachers are being held at King's College. It seems, however, that the majority of serial students in the provinces patronize correspondence institutions abroad. 
those who were unable to benefit from the limited formal education. Education facilities in Sierra Leone also took long distance learning, mostly employing the services of tuition houses in Britain. In 1925, there was an Albert Academy at Freetown. It is also possible that some help was also provided by graduates from Fourth Bay College in Ghana. It seems there was no evening class until November 1921 when classes were established at Accra and Cape Town. The Department of Education vigorously advertised the facilities for private students and publicized the examination that can be taken within the colony. Matriculation of London, Cambridge local examinations and matriculations of the College of Preceptors. After the initial experiments in Ghana, changes came in the educational scene with the establishment of the administration of Sir Gordon Gugisberg, reputed as a friend of the Africans. Sir Gordon announced in 1924 during the opening of Achimota College that Achimota, I see it will become more of the nature of, of a university college than that of a secondary school. By 1929, a university department had been added to Achimota to prepare students mainly for the external intermediate examinations of the University of London in Art and Science and the external degree of BSc Engineering. Five years later, Yaba Higher College was founded in Nigeria, but the college was unlike Achimota in many ways, and more important, its students rarely took external examinations, and in 10 years only, sev only 17 of its students passed London Intermediate Science, 5 Intermediate Arts, 6 Intermediate Commerce, and 6 BA Honours. Students' Performance Nigerian candidates performed poorly at the examinations. Similarly, the candidates from Sierra Leone obtained very poor results. Sierra Leone, for example, scored zero. When in October 1903, the single candidate presented for the intermediate examination in divinity was not recommended for a pass. Her first success was recorded when Benjamin E. Cummins passed the London matriculation examination of January 1913. Both countries presented candidates intermittently. For example, Neither of the countries presented candidates for the 1906, 1907, 1909, 1908, and 1910 matriculation examinations. In June 1912, the only candidates presented by Sierra Leone failed. Similarly, all those candidates presented by Nigeria for the January 1913 examination failed. In 1913, Sierra Leone recorded another success when her only candidates for the June matriculation examination passed. By this record, it would have been tempting to accept it as valid the theory that one acquires excellence with experience. One approach to master learning strategy, for example, is intensification effort, participation, repetition, and concentration by the teacher and learner. After about 18 years of exposure to the examination, Sierra Leone recorded a 100% success. The following year, Ghana made her first entry and scored 0%. Her two candidates for the June 1914 matriculation examination having failed. Live long as you may. The first 20 years form the greater part of life. They appear so when they are passing. They seem to have been so when we look back to them and they take up more room in our memory than all the years which succeed them. The distance learners obviously worked from position of weakness as older non-resident private students. Many of them were married, in which case they assumed further every family responsibilities which were capable of increasing their difficulties as learners. Because they were non-resident, they were compelled to travel off long distances to and from the continuation class in the process, they inflicted further transportation costs on themselves. Study Session Summary In this study session, 
we made it so important to identify and discuss the uses of remedial and continuing education. We also described the various remedial and continuing efforts made through learning and the learning facilities. Finally, we significantly examined from 1903 to 1913 and some more years the performance of qualified African students who represented their countries in the international examination. End of study session 9. Thanks for listening.